Hey, Scorpio. Whoa. So, we're going to go really intuitive. We're going to see what comes out in the cards. Sort of have a feeling what you're going through. Um, all of this energy is coming from your 12th house. Happens every year. Um, you're just in a place of wondering where your place is. We'll put it that way. And there's a lot of karmic activity that's helping you change yourself. There's a lot of stuff that is very fear-based because reality tells you that you're supposed to feel a certain way or whatever in order to move on, continue on in one direction. So we have the Hierophant, we have the Death card, and we have the Devil. All major Arcanas, welcome to your reading, by the way, popping out there. <clears throat> Uranus opposing you guys is going to create change after change after change after change after change. And you guys being fixed water it's very hard sometimes for you to recognize when there is time, when it's time for you to change, right? And it's almost as if there needs to be an outside force. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt for you guys to change, but there has to be like an outside force to kind of push you along, right? Because um, you would be perfectly content with doing whatever you wanted to do as long as it made you happy for the rest of your life if you could, right? Just, that's it. But... Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn right now are, and Pluto is going direct in just a couple of days. Um, it's squaring everything going on in your 12th house. And by that, it's a harsh relationship. And so you have to recognize where there's going to be change. And you have to recognize, because it's in your 12th house and it's in your shadow side, and you guys are like, whatever, I'm really comfortable with my shadow side. That's fine. But even somebody who's comfortable with their shadow side can become very uncomfortable when they're asked to move and they're not ready to, right? And, and I feel like, so you could either be dealing with a Taurus or a Capricorn energy also, but Uranus is in Taurus. Pluto is in Capricorn. Both of these planets are affecting you in huge ways along with Saturn. And so if you're feeling that push to change who you are right now and you're like, I don't, you know, I've been this one particular person my whole life and now all of a sudden, poof, I'm being asked to um, open myself up and be vulnerable and go this direction or go that direction or, you know, whatever, right? Um, you Again, you could be dealing with a Taurus or a Capricorn, but also in Virgo, we do have the Queen of Pentacles. We have the seven of wands and the six of swords. You know what's going to be a lot easier for you, Scorpio, it, during this time is to make sure that you have healthy boundaries. And I know we've talked about that before, but during this time more than any other time, I want you to reinforce your healthy boundaries because the six of swords is saying that things could get a lot easier for you. if you flowed with the way things are going instead of fighting against it, fighting against, because the, the current of change is coming. And you've been on a course of change anyways for quite some time, but the reality of it is you've managed to stay very comfortable within the change even you know, even through the change, which is fantastic, but some of some of us are so comfortable that it's like they're pushing against you. You're pushing against what is naturally supposed to be flowing to you. I don't know if that made sense or not, but. 
<laughs> Let's clarify these cards. I'm like, I don't know if I'm making any sense, you guys. My point here is um, with every single thing that, that brings you discomfort in your life, when it comes up, ask yourself, what is the lesson I'm learning here? What is it that I'm supposed to learn in this instance? Sorry that my glasses are glaring. I thought maybe it would be easier and I wouldn't get a headache if I wore my glasses. You think? So, <laughs> it's just they glare, but I felt a headache coming on, so I thought maybe this will be it. So you guys get me in the glasses. So... The Knight of Pentacles on the Hierophant. So if you're dealing with a Taurus that is um, moving slowly, I feel like they're doing it on purpose. Like they are purposefully moving at a snail's pace because they want to get it right. And if it's not a Taurus that you're dealing with, it's society that's moving at a snail's pace and you're like, oh my God, why is this taking so long? And it's not even society, but it's like the things that you really want to bring into fruition, you want to manifest into reality, and it's taking forever for them to get here, and you're like, oh my god. Um, I feel like you need to kind of, because the, the, the Knight of Pentacles is saying you have to take the steps forward. Some of you need to go back to school or learn a new trade or learn something new. Um, and I feel like you're you're bettering yourself and you're taking the much needed steps forward. The Knight of Pentacles is about not skipping the steps. It's the Virgo energy, right? It's about not skipping the steps. It's about taking the steps forward that are needed, but not skipping them along the way. And then we have the Three of Pentacles on the Death card. Um. And so, and I feel like the Three of Pentacles is saying that you need to learn something new. It's about entrepreneurship. It's about starting something from the ground up, but you can't skip the steps. So you can't say, I really want to do this in my life and then just jump to doing that. There are steps in between that you have to do to get there. If you want to be a lawyer, you can't just like go to the courts and be like, all right, I'm going to be defending whoever today, right? You have to go to school. You have to take exams. You have to do, uh, learn all the things, right? You have to take the steps forward to do it. And I'm not saying you're going to be a lawyer or anything. Like that. I'm just saying if there's something that you really want to bring into fruition, if you want to bring it into reality, do it, but you have to be patient enough to take the steps forward to do it and not skip them. So the devil, okay? Whatever these lessons that Saturn has been teaching you while in your third house, whatever these lessons are, they're really making you stronger and they're making you stronger from the inside out. And so I don't want you to get discouraged just because you feel like there's a little bit of resistance in what you're trying to do. You are being taught how to achieve something without getting it easily. But at the same time, getting it easily because that's your 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 purpose. That's that's what you're supposed to be doing in your life, right? And it's it's not about it's not about always struggling to get what we get. It's not about sacrificing and struggling and having to like force it. It's about allowing the energy to bring it to you and um, doing the work. As the energy brings it to you, you do the work. It's like a it's like a free flowing sort of you know. I mean, it's like I get to do my purpose every single day, but I also have to work at it. It's a business, and I have to work at it too. So everything that you're learning right now is just making you stronger. You could also have a Leo in your life that's very karmic, if we wanna get like 
just surface level there. Um, somebody, I feel like somebody's going to comment and be like, yes, there's a Leo in my life that's very karmic. You always hit that. You always got to hit that. Is there somebody in your life that you feel like you have to walk away from? The Eight of Cups on the Queen of Pentacles. Is there somebody that you are emotionally invested in, but it's not healthy for you to be emotionally invested in it? Or is this person taking too long to show up in your life? Is this person not being supportive? That kind of thing. Um, that Eight of Cups on the Queen of Pentacles is either, either an earth sign is walking away from you or you are walking away from an earth sign. Either way, the way you're going to figure out whether this person is toxic or not is when you put up your boundaries. If you put up healthy boundaries and you say, no, this is what, this is, um, these are my boundaries. Like, this is where I draw the line. And they cross that line and then they cross it again and then they cross it again and they don't, you know, with no disregard, with no regard to your feelings, right? Um, if they do that, you have your healthy boundaries and they, and they keep trying to cross them or disrespecting you, you know that they don't belong in your life. Because you, you have to have people that you can trust. You have to have people that you can, that are supportive, right? Um, and then justice on the seven of wands. So there is something about standing up for yourself. You really got to stand up for yourself right now. And the reason why you have to stand up for yourself right now is because I feel like you've done so much for other people for so long, or you've kind of been that backbone and you've been that support for so long that it's time that you get a little relief, a little like an easier road for you to take, you know? And it doesn't have to be so hard. It, it feels like it has to be hard. We make life a lot harder. But I feel like it's time for you to start really listening to your intuition big time. Because your intuition is going to guide you. You know, don't, don't let your ego, which is very fear-based, the ego is going to tell you that you have to work harder so that you can have more things in your life. Or the ego is going to tell you that you have to you know, like, it's like suffer in silence so that you can have certain things in your life. But your intuition is going to guide you through cycles that you can end, lessons that you can learn. And that's what the world is saying here in the Three of Swords. And um, with the, the High Priestess and the Page of Wands on the Six of Swords, your intuition has already been kind of nudging you um, to go in a certain direction and, and, and really allow yourself to believe that you can't. Just the mere belief that you're able to go in that direction and you don't have to, um, you don't have to hustle to get there. You don't have to kill yourself to get there. Just the mere belief shifts the energy. And there are some cycles that are ending right now that are really, really painful. Some lessons that you're learning. The sun is opposing Chiron in your 12th house. The sun is now in your 12th house and it's opposing Chiron. That's some really deep, deep, deep healing that's going to be occurring. But the beautiful part, the joyous part, instead of you being like, oh God, another crappy reading where we get the three of swords. The best part of this, it could even be a Virgo that you're closing a cycle with, with the Hermit at the bottom, and we also have the Magician. So there's some kind of manifestation of closing out cycles here, to so that your it's almost as if you're you have you're you're finally learning how to protect yourself. Or maybe not finally learning how to protect yourself, 
but you're starting to put up your boundaries and you're not letting people cross them anymore. You're like, no, I'm not going to let you just like deceive me time and time and time again. And you know what, Scorpio, is during your quiet moments in October, during your quiet moments, before we get to your season, that's where I want you to do your, your best manifesting. Close out those cycles of pain. Let the people go. Really release the people right now. Um, if you're watching this after at, on October 15th or after, your birthday special is available, by the way. Anytime before that. It won't be ready until October 15th. It won't be available until October 15th. But um, allowing yourself to be present and close out the cycles of the past and to stop feeding into, like, stop feeding the past into your present. Who cares what happened in the past? Who cares who you were in the past? You're a different person today. And manifesting from a place of quiet and silence in any place that you can get it is going to benefit you in really big ways this month. Huge, right? Um, don't give any more thought or energy to people you can't trust. The Six of Pentacles and the Seven of Swords. Don't give any more energy to people you can't trust. Because the more you hold on to the people that you, and you know who I'm talking about. Like, I don't even have to say a sign. I don't have to say anything because I don't, you know, I mean, you know exactly who I'm talking about. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, then you really need to allow yourself to get quiet and think about it, Four of Swords. But there are people that you know, just they're not here for your benefit. They're, they're, they're here for their own benefit. They don't care about anybody else but themselves. You know who those people are. And the rebuilding process starts with you, right? Eight of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups are the last two cards we're going to look at. Um, but it's about healing. It's about allowing yourself quiet, moments of quiet. We have this card is quiet. We have the Hermit that's quiet. We have the High Priestess that's quiet. The Eight of Cups is, is quite, I mean, it's like, there's so much about um, spending time with yourself and finding out what it is that you really, the direction that you want to go in, not the direction that you think society wants you to go in. Because we get into this thing in our head that, well, I'm getting older and, and I don't have much time left and I'm doing, you know. And I'm too old to have a baby, or I'm too old to start a new career, or I'm too old to start doing this, or I'm, it, this is too hard, or this is too much, or this is going to take too long, right? We do that to ourselves. And so there's this fear based of like limited time or limited resources or limited, 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 right? Do you know that there is so much that like excess of everything. There's enough for every for to go around to everybody. So what is that fear-based belief that you have? What is that fear-based belief that keeps you going at a snail's pace when you could be manifesting something like really, really fast? What do you keep telling yourself in your mind that's that's the negative? I want you to ask yourself that. And then when you figure out what it is, I want you to flip it. And I want you to start saying the opposite. Like, if you think you're too old to have a baby, I want you to flip it and be like, and say, I am just as fertile as I was when I was 20. Or I, you know, start to really settle into the idea that what you're saying is probably a big fat lie. Anyways. I know it doesn't sound realistic. I understand. I get it. But I'm not about realism. I'm about the fact that the universe is loving and it wants to give you everything that you desire. 
but you're the one that's holding yourself back by holding on to negative energies in your life and by allowing a fear-based belief system to stay in your mind, right? So rebuilding starts with you. And that's what I want you to look at this month. I want you to really spend a lot of time with yourself and rebuild because there's there's that thing that you want to do and listening to your intuition I have a feeling that that you all have that little inkling in your mind of what it is that you want to act on but you keep stopping yourself in some way so I love you guys um I am offering a self-alignment course um because I'll be taking some time off doing personal readings in October I am offering the self-alignment course that's just a fraction of what it would be to do a one-on-one with me excuse me, um, that's on October 5th, and it's going to be really amazing, and we're going to talk about the fear-based belief system and how to remove it, and we're also going to talk about how to become a master manifester, and um, it's going to be fantastic. So I love you guys. Have a wonderful October. I will see you for your birthday readings. Bye.